The Dead Sea is an amazing place. It is a wonder of the world and it is dying. As you will soon see, this is not an exaggeration. This video is going to talk about a disaster that has been going on for the last few decades. If you drive along Road 90, the road that leads to Mesada and Engedi, you won't be able to ignore it. The destruction, the sinkholes, the salt mushrooms, and I will also be showing you some other places that can't be seen from the road. In this video, I will be talking about what caused the disaster, whose fault it is, in short, the state of Israel, what solutions are suggested, and above all, I will be showing you some unbelievable footage of places and landscapes that will make you think more of a trip to Mars. Although it is a tragedy, you will soon see that it is also a beautiful disaster. As in the last videos I made, I will also be adding chapters to the timeline so you can always jump to the next chapter. The first phenomenon that I want to show you is the salt mushrooms. In the southern part of the Dead Sea, around the pools, you can see salt mushrooms. They are usually formed by salt that has crystallized around non-organic objects. The mushrooms are the only site you will be seeing in this video that is safe to visit and that I can send you to go and see for yourself. You can step on them, but make sure you have your flip-flops on as the salt can hurt your feet. And you should also be careful that the salt water doesn't get into your eyes. If you arrive here from the north, from Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, as most travelers do, the mushrooms are located a short distance from the last hotel in Enbokek. And if you arrive from the south, well, you will come across it before you reach the first hotel. The next places I'm going to show you are all best visited with a guide. And I myself joined a tour led by Shirin, one of the best known of the beaten track tour guides in Israel. There are loads of tours around here nowadays. This region, the Judean Desert, was rediscovered by Israelis during the COVID pandemic. For many years, this area, Mesada and Gedi and the Dead Sea, tended to attract foreign tourists, and Mesada was a place you visited when you were at school. The past two years has seen the development of sinkhole tours, kayak tours, and boat tours in the Dead Sea. I joined Sherin on a tour, and most of what you will see here was filmed during that tour. So these are the topics I'm going to talk about. I will leave his contact information below the video. The Dead Sea, as I said, is dying. Its water level is declining by more than a meter a year, which is completely insane. If you are from Wisconsin, just imagine what would happen if the water levels in Lake Michigan and Lake Superior were declining by four feet a year. This is happening for two main reasons. The first is that the Jordan River, which used to flow into the Dead Sea, has been blocked by dams, so hardly any water enters the Dead Sea. It's also very hot here and a lot of water evaporates. The second reason is that the Dead Sea factories pump the water into evaporation pools. These are shallow pools in which the water is left to stand so that even more water evaporates, making it easier to harvest the minerals. The drop in the water level has completely changed the shoreline. The most notable change is the sinkholes. As you can imagine, there is a lot of salt in the Dead Sea. The Hebrew name for the Dead Sea is the Salt Sea, Yama Melach. The concentration of salt in seawater is about 3%. In the Dead Sea, that concentration rises to 33%. The salt is not only in the water, but also in the layers underground. Now, there are also many freshwater springs in the area. This place is very dry, as you can see, but these mountains are on the other side of the Jerusalem mountains. And although it takes a few years, some of the water that rains in Jerusalem finds its way here underground. So when the Dead Sea withdraws, 
there is less pressure on the sources of the springs and more fresh water comes up. The fresh water dissolves the salt and the ground collapses. Think of it as a biscuit cake with layers of biscuits. Once a biscuit gets wet, whether it is from the top layer or the lower layers, the whole lot collapses. This is how sinkholes are generally created. We saw lots of them on the tour and there is a lot to know about them. Some people go into the sinkhole pools. Some are hot, some are cold, some are full of salt water and some of fresh water. Basically, if you see any cars along the road but there is no lookout there, then it is probably people going to the different springs and pools. If you're going on your own, then do yourself a favor and don't go in summer and don't go on the weekends either. So not on Friday or Saturday. Only go from Sunday to Thursday. Some of these sites get really dirty with people dropping their trash, plastic bottles and other junk. It's really disgusting. Very sad, but unfortunately very true. When it happens in nature, it looks like this. And when it happens under a road and a gas station and some shops, it looks like this. This area, which is now completely ruined, was open to the public as recently as a few years ago. I even wrote about camping here on my website. It was in 2017, I think. Just see what it looks like now. This place right next to Engedi National Park was a focal point for people traveling in this area. Will the Dead Sea completely disappear? No. The Dead Sea is 400 meters or 1300 feet deep. So at some point it will reach a balance between the water that evaporates, the surface area of the sea, and the water that does flow in from other sources. But we really don't want to get to the end of the road. There are a few thoughts on how to save the Dead Sea. The first of which was expressed 120 years ago by my friend, the father of modern Zionism, Theodor Herzl. Before there was a problem, before the Dead Sea factories existed, and when the Jordan River flowed peacefully into the Dead Sea, his idea was to build a channel from the Mediterranean Sea to the Dead Sea and to use the difference in altitude between the two. The Dead Sea is 400 meters below sea level and the Mediterranean is, well, exactly at sea level to produce electricity. The problem is that lying between the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea, you have the Jerusalem mountains, which are 900 meters or 3000 feet high. Another idea is to build a channel from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea. It would be a lot longer, but much easier to build because there are no mountains in between. This would all be part of the Great Rift Valley, which is right on the border between Israel and Jordan. The idea was to produce electricity and build desalination factory to supply fresh water to Jordan and to the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea can't handle sweet water well. Research shows that when you bring the two together, a huge amount of gypsum is created. So the Dead Sea needs only fresh water. But the problem with this project is that there is a 10,000 meter high mountain between Israel and Jordan. So about 33,000 feet of mistrust. So that project is dead for now. Another idea was to open the dams around the Sea of Galilee, allowing the Jordan River to flow as it did for millions of years. But the thing is that in a hot neighborhood like the Middle East, you don't give away fresh water so easily. There are a few other ideas that I won't get into, but the main point is that Israel needs to take responsibility and fix the problem. Obviously, the factories that are responsible for half of the damage and making tons of money from a natural resource that belongs to Israel need to pay money towards fixing the problem. The last place I want to show you is what is called the Secret River. One of my next videos will be about this river. If you want to see it, then please subscribe and hit the bell so you will get notified when I release it. Other than that, there are more videos on the way. A tour of ancient Jerusalem in the city of David. A trip to the Galilee, which I finally got up to and 
where it is all nice and green and I'm also working on a video about Capernaum. It's going to be very interesting. If you enjoy my videos, you can always show your support on Coffee and get to see the videos first. Links will be below. See you next week. Yalla bye.